Hello, Laverne here, and thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be discussing why it is that Christianity and science are not at odds with one another, that they do not conflict. Now, there are going to be a couple links in the sidebar that you may want to go to. The one uh, will take you to an interview that Richard Dawkins gives, and he talks about an important part about evolution that I think a lot of people miss, and I'll be discussing that in a little bit. The other is to a link where you can find the writings of Enoch, which I'm going to be referring to in this video. In particular, I would suggest that you go to chapter 24 of the Secrets, or the Book of Secrets of Enoch. It is there that you will find the uh, discussion, what I'm going to be talking about, on the story of creation. Now, there are a couple statements that I find both atheists and Christians make that I'd like to talk about first here. Christians will say that atheists know God exists, that it's on their hearts, and that there is a part of them that knows that God exists, but they deny. Atheists, in turn, say that Christians deny evidence of evolution and the age of the universe, that out of ignorance and blind faith, they simply turn their backs on the evidence that's in front of them, and they don't live in reality because of it. Well, the truth is that both are 100 percent correct. Christians, many of them, are denying evidence and reality that is placed before them. But atheists also deny the evidence of God that is placed before them. And if we can bridge the gap of Christianity and science, we will see more people, uh, atheists, converting to Christianity and those people who are already Christians, their faith is going to burst through the roof because when you you remove this this uh, I don't know if it's a veil or this obstruction to the reality of uh, evolution and the age of the universe when you get over this and when you learn that it is true but that God also is true your faith will increase now with that said I'm going to get into the explanation of uh, the story of creation found in Enoch because Enoch gives us the full version of creation rather than the simplified and the Reader's Digest version found in Genesis. Enoch tells us that God came down out of the spiritual realm and he had this notion, this idea of creating the physical universe. And so he called down another spirit out of the spiritual realm and he commanded him to become the foundations for creation. And he also commanded him to open himself up and to allow the light to come forth. This, of course, is Jesus, and this is confirmed in the New Testament when Paul tells us that Jesus is the foundation of all creation and that everything was created through him and for him. Then in Enoch, we are told a second time that God called him down from the spirit realm and gave another command to him, and this time there came forth an age of darkness. Now Enoch tells us that there were these two ages then, there was an actual age of light followed by an age of darkness. Then there were a few more things that he talks about that happened during this period. And this is so important to Christianity. Then he says, darkness came followed by the morning of the first day. So we see in Enoch that he talks about these two long periods of times, these two ages. And it wasn't until after these ages that the story of the creation of the earth began, the, the, the story of the six days. Something else that Christians need to realize is that the stars and the moon and the sun were not put in place until the fourth day. And so therefore, the first, second, and third day could not be the 24-hour day that so many Christians want to believe in, that they want to take the story in Genesis literally as six days. But when we have all of God's word, when we include the writings of Enoch, we see that that could not possibly be. That a day simply represents a segment of time. Enoch tells us, and it, we also see it in the, uh, in the Bible as well, that for God, a thousand years is like a day. So what this is telling us is that God doesn't think of days in the way that we do. And we need to keep this in mind when we are looking at the story of creation. So, just to recap here, the story of creation is that there were ages, long periods of time that happened even before the story of creation in Genesis is talked about. 
So this means when we look at the evidence of science that it confirms what Enoch tells us that the universe is billions of years old. These things do not conflict with Christianity but actually Christianity confirms them. Science also confirms what Enoch tells us by way of the theory of the Big Bang. For we know that and they back each other up, uh, scripture and science, that there was a point when there was nothing and that everything, all creation, was compacted into this small area, into this spot, that when it ignited, scientists say it was an ignition. Scripture tells us it was simply Jesus opening himself up and that the light came forth from his belly. But both describe this intense light that came from this explosion of the first moment of creation. Now getting on to uh, evolution. There's absolutely no reason to deny evolution. It makes sense. God tells us that we are made up of two natures. He tells us this in Enoch that there is the carnal nature which comes from the earth and the spiritual nature. That is the Spirit of God which was breathed into us and is the image of God. But the first thing that was created, the first part of us was the carnal part, that physical body. And we evolved over a period of time, our physical body, and we were carnal. And then there came a point when God introduced himself to us, and he breathed his spirit into us, his image, and we became spiritual beings. And that was 6,000 years ago. So we had our carnal being created first, that being our physical body, and it evolved over a period of time. And then the spirit part of us was placed in us. And this is actually confirmed when we look at evolution, because evolution cannot explain the inner workings of man. It can explain the exterior, but not the interior. In fact, the interior of man, how we work inside, goes against evolution. Dawkins tries to explain this uh, a bit in the interview uh, that you'll find in the link. And the way he explains it, why we do good things for strangers, is because it is a misfire of evolution. So he admits, this is the man who is the poster child of evolution and the poster child of atheism today. And he admits that the inner workings of man have a problem uh, meshing with the, uh, the idea of evolution as we know it today. But when we look at scripture, the two line up together that there is no conflict. The problem is that there has been a wedge built between science and Christianity and this was done in large part during the Reformation when the, the idea, the notion of sola scriptura came out and that all of God's word is not included, that much of it is being denied. But science and evolution are not in conflict with one another. Evolution cannot explain why we have empathy, why we want to forgive, why we do good for strangers, why we feel guilt. Evolution cannot explain why it is that people who grow up in a abusive, violent and just a horrific environment can turn out to be beautiful, loving, caring, forgiving people. And yet other people who are brought up in a loving, caring environment turn out to be absolutely evil. Evolution can't explain it, but scripture does. Because we are created with these two natures and in us is the law of God. God's word is placed on our hearts. It is there. The problem is that many people deny it. Now, as I've shown, religion or Christianity and science are not at odds. They are not in conflict. There are, however, three conflicts that we need to be aware of. Everybody needs to be aware of. Those conflicts are man against man, man against Satan, and man against God. And we all, every one of us, need to look at ourselves, look at who it is we are at peace with and who it is we are at war with. Because if we war against the wrong one, we are going to end up spending eternity in hell. All right, uh, that's about all I have, uh, all the time I have. Till next time, peace and blessings.